Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Like I mentioned last episode, this week is dedicated to showing thanks to some members of the Mod Squad whose birthdays are around now. So today, we'll be fulfilling another very special request, this time from Captain Blitz. And for his services in keeping everything in check, as well as proofreading my work, he's requested I cover a... Coincidentally adjacent theme to those I'll be covering in the You Say Explained videos, so think of this as being something of a prequel, because today we'll be covering the Assault Mode cards, and after doing some research, I've got something fun to share with y'all. When going into this episode, I thought I would be starting out by telling all of you about how Assault Mode Stardust and Red Dragon Archfiend appeared in one episode of the anime, yet somehow spawned a whole cadre of amped up synchros. But I must have remembered something wrong, because while this is all technically true, they only appear in a non-canon episode of 5Ds that was made specifically to promote the release of the core set they premiered in, Crimson Crisis, which would release in the TCG in March of 2009. So I must have seen a clip or something a long while ago, but it's not like it's some buried away childhood memory, I was almost through high school at this point. If any of you have any information that could clear this up, I'd love to hear any theories you've got. But despite the hype, Assault Mode didn't really take off, but was enough of a fan favorite to warrant an update in the 2019 core set Dark Neostorm, giving the theme more and better ways to get their battleizer modes up and running, and providing great generic synchro support along the way. So let's assemble a team made of the best of the best to test out their assault armor, see how they perform out in the field, then see how we can adjust their loadout to maximize effectiveness. It's time to get in sync with Assault Mode. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. You Say Explained is just around the corner, and subscribing is a great way to make sure you don't miss it when it drops. Not to mention it gets us closer to our 30k goal. We've also got our Discord, where all the new Gen 9 starters are respected. But Fukoko is the best. I've also got a Twitch where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pools, and don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained video I make. Thank you so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So what's the deal with Assault Mode? Well, that's where things get fun. The support team is made up of several monsters with varying types and attributes that list Assault Mode Activate in their card text, a card that's integral to the theme's functionality. And it's actually incredibly simple. Assault Mode Activate is a normal trap that tributes a synchro monster you control to special summon an Assault Mode monster from your deck in attack position whose name includes the tributed monster's name. And that's because all the monster's names stamped as Assault Mode are powered up versions of existing synchro monsters that can only be summoned using Assault Mode Activate. 500 extra attack and defense, two more levels, a usually enhanced effect, and special summons the base form from the grave if destroyed while on the field. This gives some interesting options to decks already playing certain cards. You can use that synchro as is, or give up room in your deck to make way for a stronger version that also lives in your main deck, largely defeating the main advantages of having an extra deck, which is why this particular add-on didn't see much play. They promote inconsistency, were slow because the only way to summon them was via a trap card, and if you ended up drawing them, then they were basically stuck in your hand without a way to shuffle them back into your deck. Needless to say, it was a logistical nightmare. Now, this does beg the question, will I be covering the base forms as well? And the answer is no. Some of them belong to their own archetypes that I'll likely be covering later, but I will be reviewing how the new versions compare and contrast with the old. But before we get into the exciting, candy-coated super monsters, we've got to eat our... support card... vegetables? This analogy is getting away from me. Anyway, Arcane Apprentice is a level 2 fire spellcaster tuner monster with 1000 attack and 400 defense. And if sent to the grave for a synchro summon, you can add an assault mode activate from your deck to your hand. Which is honestly a pretty good way to mitigate the issue of not having assault mode activate when you need it. Just make it part of the summon. We actually see things like this in modern card design a lot. Necessary combo pieces searching each other to form a cohesive game plan. But Modern decks would also find quick and easy ways to field the tuner and non-tuner synchro materials needed to get the whole thing off the ground, which the theme sadly does not have access to, especially when these cards came out. Also, personal beef here, you can't have Arcanite Magician Assault Mode's armor just lying around like this, waiting to be donned, when you've already shown that base Arcanite Magician is wearing it underneath their cloak! Get it together, people! 
Nightwing Sorceress is a level 3 wind spellcaster monster with 1300 attack and 1200 defense. And while on the field, you can activate Assault Mode Activate the turn it's set. Um... Neat. So that's... One more piece we have to add to the complicated puzzle that only speeds up the summoning by a turn. It doesn't do anything to assemble the pieces or anything, it just helps you get to it quicker. I do like that they're trying to cheat game mechanics to make this workable, but since it doesn't actually act as a starter for the theme, it's certainly not knight core to your strategy. Assault Beast is a level 4 beast warrior monster with 1900 attack and 1200 defense, and you can discard this card from your hand to the grave to add an assault mode activate from your deck to your hand. So now it's searchable by two cards, ain't that something? It's also nice that it's got a pretty decent 1900 attack, so if things aren't going your way, you can still plop a big normal summon onto the board and go to town. But the design aesthetic for this whole theme is really coming apart. So far we've had a magician, an angel, and now a Beast Man, which have very little connection to armor that makes our generally sci-fi synchro monsters more powerful. But I guess I shouldn't be so critical. They are just trying their beast, after all. Assault Mercenary is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 300 defense, and once per turn, you can return an Assault Mode Activate from your hand or grave to your deck to destroy a spell or trap card your opponent controls. It's a pretty good rate when sourcing it from your grave, especially since it recycles it, and can help clear back row after you've successfully summoned an Assault Mode, but that's just... Such a random piece of support, especially because you'd want to clear back row before you committed to your big assault mode summon. And another thing, I presume they're using that gun thing it's carrying as their weapon to destroy back row, but how do you reload it with the esoteric nature of the idea of assault mode activate? Like, does the cannon have some kind of card reader? A coin slot? Does a little goblin inside let you know once you've acquired enough mode moolah? Look, mercenary. I know you're trying to set yourself apart from Gene Warp Warwolf, but you've got to find a better way. These have all been the first run assault monsters, but let's get into some of the later support, because this is where things get good. Assault Sentinel is a level 4 Earth Beast Warrior monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and you can tribute them to special summon a monster from your deck or hand that specifically lists Assault Mode Activate in its text, except a copy of itself, but you're locked into only being able to special summon Synchro monsters from your extra deck for the rest of the turn. They can also target a face-up monster you control and reveal a synchro monster in your extra deck, and if you do, the targeted monster's type and attribute become the same as the revealed monsters until the end of the turn. This is in place because the synchro material required for the base forms of some of our assault mode monsters can be, uh a little picky, but are usually aligned with their own stats. So by using Sentinel's effect, you're all clear. Which makes Sentinel the condiment stand in this food-based analogy I've constructed, adding whatever flavor is needed to help tie everything together. Shut up, this makes perfect sense. But the creme de la creme of the updated support has got to be Psy Reflector, a level 1 dark psychic tuner monster with 400 attack and 300 defense. If normal or special summoned, you can add an assault mode activate, or any card that specifically lists assault mode activate, from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. And they can reveal an assault mode activate in your hand, then target a monster in your grave that specifically lists assault mode activate in its text except a copy of itself, and special summon it, and if you do, increase its level by 1 to 4. This forms a tidy little combo with Sentinel. Get our Sniper onto the field however you can, and thankfully they're searchable by Tenki, though not as easily now thanks Tri Brigade. Tribute it to summon Psy Reflector, adding Assault Mode Activate to your hand if you don't already have it. Then reveal the Assault Mode Activate to revive the Sentinel. The level increase is mandatory, but this means you now have access to any Synchro from level 6 to 9 that you can make with two monsters. And by using Sentinel's effect, you can alter either of their types and attributes to make not just Assault Mode monsters, but a lot of other Synchros in that range. Alternatively, if you summon Psy Reflector without access to Sentinel, you can use the Reflector Search to grab Beast, which in turn discards itself to search the Assault Mode Activate. This largely accomplishes the same thing as Reflector just grabbing the Assault Mode Activate, but now you have a monster engraved to revive with Reflector's second effect. But in this case, you won't be able to modulate your types and attributes to widen your Synchro options. And if you want to pull this off without having to lock yourself into only summoning synchros, well, as long as you've already got Sentinel and Grave, you can do all of this without even needing your normal summon by playing a little card I like to call Emergency Teleport 3. Let's go! Okay, so that's all the support monsters. Now it's time to get to the big payoffs. 
First is Doom Kaiser Dragon Assault Mode, a level 8 fire zombie monster with 2900 attack and 2000 defense. And when special summoned, you can special summon any number of zombie type monsters from either player's grave to your side of the field. Their effects are negated, and they're destroyed during the end phase of this turn. Talk about a fast turnaround time! The original version could only summon a single zombie from your opponent's grave, but it did stick around until Doom Kaiser left. And on top of needing a zombie non-tuner, the tuner had to be Plague Spreader Zombie. And you know, of any required tuner monster, Plague Spreader is the least egregious. Zombies were already one of the leading types when it came to synchro summoning, and it was such a good tuner that it saw play in a variety of decks besides. So they're not too hard to get into, but both versions have an unknown secondary necessary card. Zombie World If your opponent doesn't have a zombie in Grave, then base Doom Kaiser is useless. And while the Assault Mode version isn't quite as reliant on that, it still means you aren't using it to its fullest if you don't have it. It's pretty cool if you can pull it off, but for most decks, Doom Kaiser here is going to have to move aside for the Doom King. Arcanite Magician Assault Mode is a level 9 light spellcaster monster with 900 attack and 2300 defense. When special summoned, you can place two spell counters on this card, and they gain 1000 attack for each counter on them. And you can remove two counters from them to destroy all cards your opponent controls. Yowza! Who needs Megaton Magical Cannon when you have this? Out of all the Assault Modes, this was probably the most desirable for competitive play. Base Arcanite Magician already saw widespread play as spot removal that lived in your extra deck that given the right tuner could continue to be leveraged into other synchro monsters as well once it was done. But what if you could use that spot removal to clear the way for a whole board wipe? That's the promise of Arcanite Magician Assault Mode, but even that was not enough to propel one of these monsters into the limelight. But if you can resolve this, then I guarantee you you're gonna have a blast. Uh, I also got a request from Blitz to also cover Supreme Arcanite Magician, because I'm not likely to cover it unless I do Spell Counters Explained or something like that. It's a level 10 light spellcaster fusion monster, requiring a spellcaster type synchro monster and any spellcaster as material, and can only be summoned via fusion summon from the extra deck. When fusion summoned, it gets two spell counters, and each one grants it a thousand attack, bumping it up to 3400 attack. And once per turn, you can remove a spell counter from anywhere on the field to either destroy a card on the field or draw a card. Miracle Synchro Fusion was released to, I suppose get a little extra mileage out of your synchros after they hit the grave, acting, as the name implies, as Miracle Fusion for a number of fusion monsters that list synchro monsters as material. And I've gotta say, as far as these monsters go, Supreme Crunchwrap Arcanite Magician here is pretty good. They hit the board with powerful stats, and while you can't machine gun the destruction effect like the base form, it can pull counters from other cards, so you don't have to diminish its size if you're playing a spell counters matter deck and can draw you cards as an alternative if destroying cards isn't feasible. They've got all this power, but they couldn't have used any of it to keep those pauldrons in check, huh? Doorways must be a real pain in that thing. Colossal Fighter Assault Mode is a level 10 Dark Warrior monster with 3300 attack and 1500 defense, and when this card is special summoned, you can send up to two warrior monsters from your deck to the grave, and all monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack for each warrior in your grave. A stark contrast to the 100 attack the base Colossal Fighter would gain for each warrior in all graves. And it can't really have an upgraded version of the original floating effect, because all the assault modes already do that. The foolishing of two warriors is completely new though, but while setting up your grave is pretty sweet, I certainly wouldn't rely on this card to handle that because of all the setup. You could say it's a colossal resource sink. Red Dragon Archfiend Assault Mode is a level 10 Dark Dragon Monster with 3500 attack and 2500 defense, and after this card attacks, you destroy all other monsters after damage calculation, both your opponents and yours. So when this RDA fights, you better make sure it fights alone. Whether or not this can be seen as an upgrade though is up for interpretation. The base form already did an excellent job of clearing away defenses by blasting all defense position monsters and only destroyed your own cards if they didn't attack, but the assault mode version takes both effects and cranks them up to 11. Though I guess that's to be expected, being a powerful dragon that usually comes with some annoying drawback is kind of Red Dragon Archfiend's modus operandi. 
Stardust Dragon Assault Mode is a level 10 wind dragon monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense. And when a card or effect is activated as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And during the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, you can special summon this card from your grave. Normally, this wouldn't be allowed because the assault modes can only be summoned by assault mode activate, but this one made just enough of an exception to keep its iconic rebirth effect intact. And now it doesn't just hit destruction effects, it can negate anything. Alongside Arcanine Magician, if any monster could make this mechanic work, it'd be the iconic level 8 synchro that was being used format-wide to hedge bets against destruction effects. It doesn't even require specific materials like Arcanine Magician does. But, despite all the upgrades and having blue eyes stats, the Assault Mode version just couldn't rival the base form's popularity. Hyper Psychic Blaster Assault Mode is a level 11 Earth Psychic Monster with 3500 attack and 3000 defense. And if this card battles a monster at the end of the damage step, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's defense and gain life points equal to that monster's attack. So how does this compare with the base form? Well, original Hyper Psychic Blaster deals piercing battle damage while also gaining you life points in a way that's usually equal to the damage dealt as if they attacked a defense position monster, but it's not tied to actually doing damage so that's funky. This new version lacks piercing, so if you were to, say, attack a monster with a thousand defense, you wouldn't get to do 2,000 damage and gain 2,000 life points, you'd just burn your opponent for a thousand and gain an arbitrary amount of life points based on their attack. So it's less of an upgrade and more effect adjacent. And honestly, that's not a good place to be, considering you have to make a level 9 synchro back before really powerful synchro options were available. And your non-tuner had to be a psychic, making this hyper-psychic blaster hyper-psychic annoying to summon. Our last Assault Mode is also the latest, TG Halberd Cannon Assault Mode, a level 12 Earth Machine monster with 4500 attack and defense. And when your opponent would summon a monster as a quick effect, you can negate the summon, and if you do, banish it and all special summoned monsters your opponent controls. And its revival effect ignores summoning conditions, so you can bring back base Halberd Cannon when this one bites the dust, no problem. It also breaks the Assault Modes have two more levels pattern, but the darn thing was already level 12 to begin with, what do you want? If we start printing level 14s, we're in for some major headaches. Anyway, this effect is outrageously powerful, as it now breaks boards as well as negates a summon. And honestly, since you have to tribute an Excel Synchro monster to make it, it better be busted. And this card delivers, making sure you're pole-armed for whatever board your opponent tries to cook up. Alright, that's all the monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Assault Teleport is a normal spell that returns an Assault Mode monster from your hand to the deck to draw two cards. This was something of a necessity to run during the theme's first run. Instead of letting Assault Mode activate summon from the hand as well, they gave us an archetypal draw two spell that puts it back into our deck, and it doesn't function in a way that guarantees we won't draw it again. Thanks. And what's funny is that, because it doesn't have Assault Mode Activate in the text, it can't even be searched by Psy Reflector nowadays, which is pretty rough. This is definitely a Teleport spell card I'm okay with not mentioning ever again. Assault Mode Zero is a quick play spell that tributes a Synchro Monster to special summon an Assault Mode monster from your hand, whose name includes the tributed monster's name. And it's also treated as being a summon using Assault Mode Activate. Now we have a way to summon in hand Assault Modes, though Zero still doesn't do anything if you don't have the right monsters lined up. But its Grave Effect can help mitigate this, banishing itself to set Assault Mode Activate from your hand or deck, and it can be activated this turn. I guess they didn't mind power creeping Nightwing Sorceress. It doesn't even have the usual except the turn this card is sent to the Grave Clause, so if you have a discard outlet, you can suit up whichever synchro you summon with a neat redesign, literally taking them from zero to Assault Mode in no time flat. Assault Overload is a quick play spell that tributes an Assault Mode monster to burn both players for damage equal to 200 times its level. Yeah, I... Guess the theme revolving around powerful, hard to summon monsters needed a way to tribute them for no value to close out games? Like, this isn't terrible, I can totally see a line of play where you've swung in for a lot of damage, but you're about a thousand short so you overload one of your assault modes to close out the game, but this could have been anything that would have improved the archetype, but they decided no, what we need is to add utility, I am so over this card. 
Assault Revival is a quick play spell that removes from play an Assault Mode Activate from your grave. All monsters you control are destroyed, then you special summon an Assault Mode monster from your grave, ignoring summoning conditions. Its effects are negated, and it can't be tributed, presumably to keep you from comboing with the overpowered and format warping Assault Overload. And if removed from the field, that monster is banished. Thankfully, our Assault Modes don't have to go to the grave to float, they just have to be destroyed. So at least it's nice to get the floating effect. And since there's no restrictions on when Revival can be played, or what position the monster has to be in, you can actually use this card during the battle phase to cheat out even more damage. And with bodies ranging from the high 2000s to the mid 4000s, this could end a game all on its own. Well, uh, unless you use it to summon Arcanite Magician Assault Mode, but that's what Overload is for! God, I'm still mad about that card. Assault Slash is a normal trap that you can only activate while you control an Assault Mode monster, destroying all face-up monsters on the field, including... your... Assault Mode monster. Thankfully, your Assault Mode's floating effect doesn't care how they get destroyed, so it's not like you're losing everything, just a lot of things. It can also be helpful in cases where your opponent tries to remove your assault mode via non-destruction methods, or you want to get a whole other attack in the battle phase, because you can pop it with Slash, then summon the base form out of your grave and go to town. And if you have Revival in hand, you can resummon that assault mode and attack again! It can lead to some brutal battle combos, really putting the Slash in assault mode. Wait, how do you pronounce that out loud? Assault Reboot is the first successful attempt at making a card that incentivizes you to run Assault Mode as a whole deck instead of just splashing inappropriate monsters. It's a normal trap that tributes an Assault Mode monster to special summon another Assault Mode monster with a different name from your deck in defense position, ignoring summoning conditions. So now you can swap between your super powerful effects. Though it seems they caught on to my scheme of just cycling through a bunch of Assault Modes to OTK since you have to summon in defense position. You can also ban this card from your grave to target any number of cards in your grave with different names that are either Assault Mode Activate or cards that specifically list Assault Mode Activate in their text, except other copies of Assault Reboot, and shuffle them into the deck, so you can play the bare minimum copies needed without losing out on sustainability. Now, I'm just a simple Yu-Gi-Oh player, but when using Reboot, I'm pretty sure the best thing you can do with it is summoning the TG Halberd Cannon version. Getting to its base form is hard enough outside of Tech Genus, but now you can have access to a summon a gate just as easily as you would a Stardust Dragon. And it's very aptly named, since these new cards in Dark Neo Storm really did reboot the theme. Our last card is Assault Counter, a counter trap that can only be activated while you control an Assault Mode monster, and it negates the activation of a spell card, trap card, or monster effect, and destroys it. So like how Assault Slash was a less powerful Red Dragon Archfiend Assault Mode, Assault Counter is a... slightly better Stardust Dragon Assault Mode? Sure, it can be taken out by back row removal before being used effectively, but since it can't be responded to, your opponent can only answer your counter with a counter trap. So from the looks of it, you don't even have to bother with Stardust Dragon to keep your play safe. I mean, if Doom Kaiser Dragon can do it, then anyone can. Okay, so that's all the Assault Mode cards, but what do we do with them? So aggro is definitely where it's at. Most of our effects are here to wreck face, and that's exactly what we plan to do. We'll focus on getting to our combo pieces as quickly as possible to get a big assault mode on the field, then cycle through them to knock our opponent's lights out before they have a chance to respond. And if things don't go as planned, we can also reboot into TG Halberd Cannon to limit our opponent and try again next turn. But what can we play to help them out? Revival cards are going to be pretty good here. While we can't bring back our assault modes from the grave, we sure can can summon many of their base forms. The odd Monster Reborn and Call of the Haunted can add a ton of extra attack to our board, not to mention getting more protection into rotation in the form of Stardust Dragon. As an alternative to playing OG Red Dragon Archfiend, how about trying Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend? It counts as base RDA while on the field and in the grave, so you contribute it for Assault Mode and revive it. And on top of that, it has a much more relevant effect, clearing away any effect monster on the board with attack equal to or less than Scarlight, and burning for damage, all while applying no restrictions. It's the perfect setup. 
And let's not forget the massive range of options the Cyreflector combo gives you. If you don't have any Assault modes ready to go, you can play any other powerful cards. <laughs> <Dark flat top. laughs> Ancient Sacred Wyvern is a great monster for taking advantage of massive swings and life points. Draco Berserker of the Tenyi is just a solid boss to get behind. Goyo Guardian is available thanks to Sentinel's modifications. But if you want to take out some of your opponent's cards before committing to your usual plays, High Speed Droid Kite Drake is where it's at. Sentinel just has to turn Cyreflector into a wind machine, thankfully all the things Kite Drake is, and now you can either blast the field or hit your opponent with a Dark Ruler no more that hits spells and traps while not limiting life point damage. And those negates are permanent. As for a silly tech pick, Gaia Armor Dragon Shell is a pretty funny way to recycle your synchro monsters. Reboot can do that for all of your Assault Mode monsters, and this card evens it out, letting you access your Assault Modes later on. And if you're not ready to upgrade them, just equip those Synchros with Gaia Armor from the Grave to help you draw cards to get to your combo pieces. And that's all I have to say about Assault Modes. They've had quite the glow up since Dark Neo Storm, but they've still got a long way to go until they see the same kind of tournament success as their base forms. It can be a daunting challenge to innovate on a classic, let alone live up to the legacy of such successful cards. But there's always room for improvement. And with the seven we already have, adding one more could be the secret sauce that ties the whole thing together, as well as making it an even Assault Mode Activate. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you have a Synchro Monster you'd like to see given the Assault Mode treatment? Have you ever tried to make this theme work? And what are some of the nuttiest combos you can think of involving these aficionados of Assault? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video to show your support, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Adam Zajdel, Nebula Navigators, Benjamin Meisner, Eric, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, John Manji, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Shooting Star 3300, Sun Sorrow, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Serb, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, RGS and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, as well as help me keep this as my day job, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to see me talk about another deck that puts a fresh spin on Synchros, check out this video I did covering Earth's Arctics. And if you want to see two yu gi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye